On February 6, 2024, I made the horrible decision of playing Pal World for 24 hours straight. My goal was to catch 100 different pals. I went into this challenge knowing it would be quite difficult, but holy guacamole, I was unprepared for the physical and mental anguish I was about to experience. From major setbacks in game, aww, to the consequences of malnutrition, ah, this was definitely the second most miserable experience of my life. Anyways, let's get right into the pal catching shenanigans. I woke up, made some breakfast, and booted up my PC. I was off to a bit of a bad start since this guy decided to stay up all night watching Elden Ring lore videos. So I would be doing this challenge on four hours of sleep. I named my world, made my character, yeah, good enough, and woke up in the wonderful land of Pal World, where I realized I had already made another mistake. Wait, is my, do I have a girl voice? Oh my God, I forgot to change that. First thing on our priority list, we gotta we gotta start making some balls. To craft balls, we need stone, wood, and palladium of a paladinium of a pal padlium a PP stone. So I spent a couple of minutes crafting tools, harvesting resources, and crafting pal spheres. If you haven't already guessed it, these are what we're gonna be using to complete the challenge. But this is only half of the equation. You see, pals will compliantly stay inside pal spheres just because you throw it at them. Just like Pokemon and children, you first have to beat them into submission, which is where this club comes into play. And so I went on to catch some pals. Guys, watch, I'm gonna do the funny cat in the hat meme. All right, let's just go on a catching spree real quick. I'm here, Kativa. I want to give you a nice home. Okay, I'm not going to lie to you. I want to put you to work. Ah! Once I used up all my pal spheres, I got to work on building my first base. But in the middle of construction, something unexpected happened. Huh? Hey, who tried to press me right now? Okay, these dudes actually kind of look scary. What level are they? Oh, pff. Get out of here. After adding the hot topic lizards to my collective, I started working on my house. It was going to be epic. Here was my vision. Multiple bedrooms, 50 foot game room, 20 car garage, a basement for my ocelot and child slaves, and most importantly, a kitchen with a central island. But due to a lack of resources and brain cells, I settled for the shit shack. Once I had that done, I spent the next couple of minutes exploring around, expanding the work camp, and making new equipment. But it was all interrupted when I noticed a pal trespassing my base. One that I haven't caught yet. You shall be mine. Oh! Why would you do that? I was gonna catch him! You know what? Nah, 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 nah. You don't even get to do work anymore, alright? Yeah, have you learned your lesson yet? Yeah. Don't you ever do that again. After I was finished violating the 8th Amendment, I started looking into the PAL gear workbench, where I learned that I could make specialized equipment that allows me to utilize my PAL's abilities to their full potential. However, the most impressive thing I could make at the moment was a saddle for this Weenie Hut Jr. looking ass llama, but it did help me get around much faster, so I decided to go out and explore once again. I had two goals for this outing, find new PALs, and harvest a shit ton of PP stone. Lucky for me, I found a cave, which happened to be a great place for both of these tasks. On top of that, these caves also have an alpha pal that we can catch, which is like a normal pal, but bigger. I caught the oversized turd leaf, collected the loot, then left the cave, where I used the resources to build a logging site and a harness for the Firefox browser mascot. This harness wasn't for riding the pal, but for something far more sinister. But I'll show you that later, because there's currently another trespasser on the property. What is that? Oh my god, I want you. Pause. Yeah, that's right. Jump him. Jump him. Oh my god, hold on. Like, this man's like actually getting jumped. I actually don't know if I'll be able to catch him. Fuck! Was dead. Well, guys, back to work. Once I was restocked on pal spheres and arrows, I went out for another pal catching venture, this time with the goal of catching alpha boss pals. The closest alpha boss was to the southeast, and it was a level 38 weed mammoth. I was currently an impressive level 13. I was as likely to beat this pal as Minecraft YouTubers are to beat pedophile allegations. So I made my way to the northeast to fight a level 11 dragon noodle. I noticed it was an ice type, which was good since I happened to have the Firefox with me. What I didn't realize was just how strong Firefox was. Oh wait, hold on. Um, 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 you come back. <gasps> no! Fuck. 
Now this wasn't exactly the end of the world. I would get another chance to enslave it in one hour, but I had to occupy myself for the time being. So I roamed around and caught every pal on sight. While I was out, I noticed that some of the pals started slacking off. And if there's one thing that regular show taught me, it's that slacking off leads to horrible consequences. So I decided to fix this issue by having a pep talk with my pals. All right, so it seems like some of you guys have been slacking recently. So as compensation, I have made a bit of an investment to the camp. This memento right here. You are replaceable. Get back to work. As I was taking care of some errands at base, I was raided again, but not by pals this time, by humans. Which gave me the opportunity to use my Firefox's harness. All right, guys, you know you done fucked up. Oh my god, it's beautiful. Once they were taken care of, I built an egg incubator, allowing me to potentially hatch new pals to help reach our goal. Speaking of which, I checked my progress around the three hour mark, and needless to say, we were doing very well. 27 pals encountered, and 22 of them registered. But before I could celebrate, I was unfortunately raided by more humans. Not unfortunate for me, for them. The ass beating they received upon setting foot on my base could have easily been described as an act of domestic terrorism. Once that was over, I went out and found one of the best pals in the game. Dog. When you put them to work, these guys periodically dig up coins, arrows, and most importantly, pal spheres. Everything was going so well until I got to the forest, where everything was much, much stronger. I'm getting jumped. Oh my god, I'm actually getting jumped. It was my first death of the playthrough, but I managed to get my equipment back with no trouble. This time. However, my armor was damaged. This didn't scare me though since I was a master at the art of dodge rolling. And by master, I mean I spammed it over and over, praying I didn't die. After being hit with a brutal reality check, I made my way to the nearest fast travel and went back home where I hatched my first egg. The cat from Alice in Wonderland. From here, I started grabbing resources to build a second base. You see, earlier I found a clearing with a bunch of metal nodes. Building a base here would allow me to turn this area into an automatic metal farm. I didn't bring much since I was only trying to make the base console, and that turned out to be a huge mistake. Okay, we got some ops here. Oh my god, I'm attracting so much attention to myself like this. Oh my god, is there another one? Oh my god, I'm sandwiched. This is not good. I just spawned here! But I returned, got all my equipment, and managed to set up the base console without suffering from a second skill issue. And over the next 45 minutes, I spent time upgrading both bases and hatching eggs. At around the five hour mark, I decided to go pal catching once again. Also taking this time to harvest resources and challenge another boss, McDonald's Llama. This is a pal I really wanted to catch since it has the ability to increase my carrying capacity by 100 pounds or 45.35 kilograms for you weirdos across the globe. Once that was caught, I explored a little further and discovered a small settlement that had a traveling merchant. Give these guys coins and they'll sell you anything. Milk, wheat, pal organs, Percocets, pure fucking ketamine, you name it, this guy can get it for you. The only thing he can't sell you are pals since that's illegal. But that's what his brother is for, the pal merchant. So I bought some leather and went back to base, where I hatched a new pal, Thick Thighed Space Lady. She happened to be very skilled in using her hands, so you know exactly what I had to use her for. Crafting my items for me. And on top of being very handy, she also has gravitational powers. Combined with OB Slama King, I was able to carry over 800 pounds of items. Uh, or sorry, <clears throat> about 363 kilograms of tea and crumpets, bruv. Next thing I wanted to do was go to the desert and catch a specific pal. You see, back at the iron base, I was getting tired of farming the metal nodes on my own. And since these Pink Panther ripoffs don't want to lend me a goddamn hand, I need a pal who can. Shit colored Bowser. Once I added a bunch of them to my collective, I went back home and realized that I had been playing this game for seven hours straight. I was getting hungry, so I think this would be a good time for a quick... Uh, I haven't caught one of these derposauruses yet, so I tried to do so before they reached the base. Because if they did, I knew damn well that they wouldn't survive. I'm not gonna lie, these dudes are about to like actually get jumped. I think I just saved it from imminent death. Once things cooled down, I decided to retire my primitive weapons and build my first gun. And with my new Blicky in hand, I went out to challenge more bosses, starting with the dragon noodle I killed much earlier, which turned out to be an easy catch. Then I challenged a wizard cat persona. 
which also turned out to be an easy catch. At around the eight and a half hour mark, I started to get very hungry, which is reasonable since I haven't eaten in eight and a half hours. So I ate some food while watching my pals work on my freshly built assembly line. It was like lunchtime YouTube, just far more unethical. But little did this version of Mono know that this would be his last meal of the day. When I was done, I went back to the efficient system of harvesting resources, catching new pals, and hatching eggs when I returned to depot materials and restock. From now on, I will refer to this as the cycle of efficiency, or Co for short. I continued Co for many hours until I got to the halfway point, where I realized I've seen 72 different pals and caught 67 of them. Wonderful progress indeed. But this is where my four hours of sleep caught up to me. My brain started to feel a little something like this. I didn't want my progression to slow down, so I decided to head out and grab an energy drink. Zip it, white boy, it's Black History Month. You're, you're not even black. After I finished fueling up on caffeine, I started co once again with the goal of catching stronger fire type pals. So I traveled far to the west toward a volcano. Here's an interesting fact. Fire types like to live where it's very hot. I mean, it's pretty obvious, right? Since they're made out of literal fire. Well, my smooth brain self was not thinking of that. So when I arrived at the biome, I was met with scorching hot temperatures. Now surely I would make the smart decision and leave the area to come prepared, right? No. What Smooth Brain Mono did was sit in the water and try to catch fire types from the beach. Oh my god, those are some scary numbers, Loki. No! I forgot it hurts to be on land. Believe it or not, this wasn't that big of a setback. The only thing I needed to explore the area with minimal issues was heat resistant armor, which at this point was fairly cheap and quick to make. So I got my loot back and began exploring the volcano. The fuck is that? That looks so cool though. The, the area is clear, 1v1. This is gonna be a terrible idea. Oh my God, this thing's gonna be so hard to catch. Come on, just stay in the ball, stay in the ball, stay in the ball, stay in the ball. Please stay in the ball. Please, I want you on my team, please. Come on, you wanna stay in the ball? Yes! I checked out the new fire type pals and saw that the gas leak lion had a level three kindling ability. Just the thing I was looking for to speed up my metal production. Now at this point, I was level 36, which meant I had access to a new gun blueprint, the single shot rifle. But in order to craft it, we would need a new material called refined metal ingots, which can be made with metal ore and coal, a resource I have an abundance of on Christmas day. But I already used all my Christmas coal burning down multiple children hospitals. So I had to go back to the caves. I was expecting this to be a bit of a long process, but me and my pals locked in. With brown bowser decimating coal deposits, fire lion blasting my furnaces, and thick thighed space lady putting that shit together like Forrest Gump, I managed to get my hands on the rifle after 45 minutes of work. Which makes me very thankful I didn't have to do that all by myself. With my new rifle in hand, I returned to the volcano to capture more pals. But little did I know the horrible pain I was about to experience. Now at first I was thinking I'd die to fall damage. However, since I died near lava, I needed to make another set of heat resistant armor, which took the remainder of my metal. Well, when I went back to pick up my stuff, I learned that I still wasn't able to withstand the temperature of a fucking volcano. The only way to do so is to have a specific ice type pal on your team that keeps you cool when you have a saddle for it. The problem is, this pal lives on a snowy mountaintop that requires cold resistant armor unless you want to turn into a goddamn popsicle. Oh yeah, and uh, I'm not sure if you remember, but we're fucking broke now. <sighs> so I harvested materials, got the equipment I would need for our snowy expedition, then began traveling to the northeast, catching more pals along the way. This is where my luck started to turn around. I found the pal I was looking for almost instantly, and it wasn't too difficult to catch either. But then disaster struck once again. My recording software crashed. Luckily, I noticed it pretty fast and only lost about 30 to 45 minutes of footage. In that time, I made a saddle, armor, and managed to retrieve all my lost items. But fearful of losing everything again, I left the area to continue co for a couple hours. At around the 18 hour mark, I checked my progress again. 95 pals seen, 88 registered. I would have been much happier to see these numbers if I wasn't feeling so malnourished. Skipping meals can lower your blood sugar, which in hand can lead to dizziness, low energy, and make you feel like you're gonna pass out. It had been 10 hours since my last meal, and I was feeling all of the above. 
but instead of eating something to get my energy back up, I decided to continue playing with the power of my indomitable human spirit. At this point, there was no real use for me upgrading my equipment or leveling up, so I went full set on catching whatever I could for these last few hours. I started off in the snowy region to the north, then explored the backside of a volcano, searched around the desert in the far northeast, and checked out the three wildlife reserves. But it was at this moment when things started to crumble. The pal that helped me reach this island was killed, and since I was soon to follow, I was forced to leave the island and swim back to shore, ultimately resulting in another death just right off the coast. But then, something snapped inside of me. I don't know if it was the death, the malnourishment, or the four hours of sleep, but my body just couldn't take it anymore. I closed my eyes, and I passed out. I know you're behind the screen wondering, did I reach my goal? Well, right before I passed out, I opened up my pal deck where I saw 120 pals encountered and caught 112 of them. But this got me thinking. I only needed to catch 25 more pals in order to complete the pal deck. Not only did I have a lot of setbacks this playthrough, but I also didn't even utilize breeding, which could have gotten me any pal I wanted. So I wondered, is it possible to catch every pal in less than 24 hours? If you want to see me put myself through more misery, like the video, subscribe, and comment down below. If I see a lot of love, I'll fucking do it again. Okay. Anyways, I got two more videos in the works right now based on these games, so be on the lookout for those. Anyways, have a good day.